Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. I'm getting ready to do a video or two on integrating Google Calendar with the Notion PPV system, but I realized before doing that, I needed to do a more in-depth introduction on how to plan the day. We talked about this a little bit in the overall action zone introduction a while back, but I still get a lot of questions among participants in my course and in the online community. And I wanted to give a little bit more specific and detailed demonstration on how I plan each day. And this happens the night before. So the night before each day, I will plan the details and the sequence and the priorities of what I'm going to do the following day. So when I come back and sit down at my desk that next day, I'm ready to go. I have a clear path forward. There is no ambiguity whatsoever. And if I start doing something that's not on my plan schedule, I know I've deviated. There is clarity that I'm off track. So the path on what I need to do and what I'm supposed to do is extremely clear and transparent. And that's why we do it the night before. So we don't sit down and have that, oh, what should I start on first? That question is dangerous. That question will not lead to your most productive, high impact days. You do this by planning the night before, sitting down at your desk and having a clear path from the moment you hit the chair. So today I'm gonna to walk through a demonstration on how I would plan my day for tomorrow, today, the evening before. And then in the next video or two, we're gonna look at how I integrate Google Calendar and scheduling with my Notion planning system, particularly in the action zone, which is our focus area, where we look at just what we're doing on any specific day and we have a crystal clear path to go through the day and do the things that matter most and not get distracted and not waver for anything. That's why it's so important to have such a clear focus board and our action zone presents that. I've seen a lot of dashboards where you execute your day in the midst of a whole schedule for the week. I think that is a really counterproductive approach because you've got a whole week's worth of things distracting you, the clutter, the potential to jump into other things. There's just too much going on in a week. When you sit down at your desk to execute for the day, you need to look at just today's activities and perfectly lined up in the sequence with the priorities clearly defined and how you're going to attack the day. So that's what we're going to look at today. And then after trying this approach, if you're still having trouble, in the next video we're going to talk about the ultimate hardcore approach of time blocking, where you really plan out each specific chunk of the day and the clarity is taken to a whole nother level. That requires integrating with Google Calendar. You can't really do that very effectively in Notion. It can be done, but it's messy, it's slow, it's not as good. At this point, I'm gonna show you how to take your priority list in your action zone and your daily toggle in the Notion PPV system and coordinate it with the scheduled tasks in the Google Calendar or any true calendar app that you use. You can do true time blocking where you're really blocking out every minute of the day. That doesn't mean you'll be working every minute of the day. You're planning the fun time, you're planning the family time, you're planning the rest time, you're planning the work time and you're, then you're defining in the work time specifically what you can work on in each minute and each hour. And that's how you take it to the next level. I go back and forth in different periods of my life between the two. Most of the time I do what I'm going to show you today, the looser but still very structured and streamlined approach. But when I'm disappointed with myself, when I'm getting distracted too easily, or if I feel I'm not actually executing at the level that I want to, then I'll go for a while, for a matter of several weeks, even months, with the time blocking approach. And when I commit to that approach, I get things done without wavering. It's just a whole nother level of focus and intensity, but you can balance between the two and depending on the demands of the current time period you're in, the current things you're working on, the deadlines you have coming up, you can choose between these two approaches or do a hybrid somewhere in the middle. So with that, let's dive in. So as usual, we're starting in the command center, which is our top level dashboard, and we will jump into the action zone, which is the focus area for day-to-day -day action. It's where we plan and execute our days. It'll start with the toggles closed, but typically we will open the today toggle right here, which has a daily tracking section down here, which can be closed or open. I leave it open so I can track my habits as we go through the day. But this is the lineup of actions and activities that I'm executing on today. And toward the end of the day, as it is now, it's late in the day, I've accomplished a number of quick items, an immediate item, some scheduled items. I've checked them off when I was done. I, accomplish my first and second priority, and I have third, fourth, and fifth priority still here. I often won't schedule fourth and fifth priorities. I think one, two, or three is ideal, unless they're smaller and you think you have a shot at getting to four and five, in which case you can list them. I only got through one and two, which is not uncommon for any of us. Even accomplishing your top one and two priority for the day is a success on most days for me and for most of us. So we've got a few left. Now we need to schedule tomorrow. 
We can close this to simplify. We'll roll down to the calendar view. The calendar view is so good at doing this. This is where I do all of my planning for the next day. And these are samples. This is just a demonstration version of the PPV system. This is not my personal one. So we have some actually labeled sample tasks, but of course yours will be labeled specifically. I have some dummy tasks also in here, like call Ted, just to give us some items to work with. So it's filtered to show all the active tasks and the done is not checked. And then it's sorted importantly by priority. So inevitably a calendar view is going to be sorted first by date. You know, each day is going to have its items. And then within each date, it'll be sorted by priority. So the sorting here is the same as the sorting up here. So if we look at upcoming, we could alternately see tomorrow's lineup here. We could do this between this list and this tomorrow list, which is the same view as the calendar. But I just find it so much easier to work with the calendar view and just to drag them left and right through here. So I have a few that I didn't finish today. The question is, do I need to do those tomorrow or can I bump them out further? What's more important? What I already had planned for tomorrow or what I have remaining from today, because you can't do everything. You have to t make realistic choices. That's what our planning for tomorrow is such that it needs to be a realistic, viable schedule for tomorrow, not an impossible dream. It may be a reach, it may be challenging to finish it, but it needs to be conceivably possible or push things out further and have a realistic lineup for tomorrow. So this was designed to be a realistic lineup for tomorrow and it's looking pretty busy already. So it doesn't look like I have room for additional tasks. I either need to bump some of tomorrow's out to make room for today's that didn't get finished or the today's that didn't get finished need to get pushed out. Let's take a look. So immediately in the morning, I need to confirm a bill payment. Sometimes that's something you need to make sure it happens on the day. I'm testing auto pay perhaps, and it was supposed to pay on the first. And now I'm going to look to see if it did or if I need to call the provider that needs to be done immediately to make sure the payment was done on time. That can't change, that's tied to that date. Call Ted, I definitely need to get back to Ted. This of course is a sample task, but let's say that call to Ted needs to happen, so that's gotta stay. Reply to Anders, that could bump. Now these are quick ones, these aren't gonna take too much time. I'm gonna generally leave the quick ones in unless they're piling up. I tend to do two, maybe three quick ones if they're there, but if it starts to get five or six, then I'll spread them out over the week. So we could push Anders back another day. So this one is to deliver a performance review, someone I'm working with. Again, just sample tasks, but to give you a sense of the kinds of things that might be scheduled at a specific time, anything that's scheduled at a specific time will be given the schedule designation and have a specific time with the include time toggle turned on. So scheduled items are on the calendar here. On Saturday or Sunday, when I do my weekly review, I'll typically look at my Google Calendar, which has a lot of automation, scheduling things with calendar invites, Calendly, bringing things into the schedule all the time. So. At the beginning of the week, I'll look out and I'll bring in anything on my Google Calendar that should be scheduled so I can see it here in my Notion view. Ultimately, the API I'm hoping will end that and we'll have automated sync between Google Calendar and Notion, but at the moment, I'll bring them in manually. And then the night before, I'll also check to see if I have anything scheduled. So this is something I might pick up by checking the night before if it's been scheduled since my prior weekly review. But I like to have it in my Notion calendar so I don't miss it. You could, of course, jump in back and forth between a Google or Microsoft Outlook calendar or whatever you use. But I find I live my days in Notion, so I like to have it here. But my true north for actual scheduled meetings will be in my Google calendar. So I need to manually bring those in here or toggle between them on a regular basis. So that's there, that can't move, that's a scheduled time. First priority is to write the executive summary for a meeting coming up. There's sample, but that's the kind of thing that might be urgent if the meeting is coming up shortly, perhaps the next day. So that can't change, that's gotta get done, it's gotta get done early. Compile sales report, well, then maybe that's not so important. Maybe that can slide to Thursday, make a little room for the sample tasks to come in. Let's make that sample task second priority. Check out the items here. Now the priority can always shift as I'm continuing to sort out the day. So I need to complete the monthly bookkeeping. You know, I think as I think about it, that's actually more important than the sample task. Let's make that a second priority. Let's make the sample task our third priority. We're lining up the sequence in which we're going to be doing our big focus projects for the day. Then I have an errand. I need to pick up this package. Let's say that's not so important. I'm gonna keep the day clean for these priorities, make sure they all get done bump that to the next day. I have to wish someone a happy birthday, so I have that in here as a reminder. That can't change because birthdays are on the days that they are on. Doesn't matter when I do that throughout the day, so it's listed as a reminder. The quick ones up front could be reminders as well, but ones that you want to get knocked out quickly, they're they tend to be two or three minute tasks under five minutes. Something you can get done, remove the clutter of your day, simplify your action list. But if it's not important, then you can also leave it at the end of the day or middle of the day with just a reminder to get to it at some point. Same thing with an errand. Errand is something that's done 
not at a specific time. It's flexible whenever you can work it into the day. If it does need to be done at a specific time, then it would not be an errand. It would be scheduled. So I'm just feeling it out. So we got two more here. I need to make a great video. Making a video takes time and I'm looking at tomorrow and it's just not going to fit in. It's not a hard deadline. So I'm going to bump that one back to Thursday. It looks like it's got a little bit more room. And then I have another sample task here. Again, the day's looking full. This is not that important. There's already a fifth priority. That can wait. I think I'm going to bump that out even to Friday, which is an even clearer day. And all the ones I have here, I'll just push them out. Anything here I need to move because I need to squeeze something in, I'll push it out. Things slide. You have to be realistic about what can be accomplished in a day. Plan with realistic expectations and you won't have that disappointment or that burden of this endless to-do list that's impossible and you have no hope of doing and therefore you're not even going to try to get it all done because why bother? It's impossible. If you make the list possible, you're going to reach, you're going to try to get it done because it's an amazing feeling to get your to-do list done. So if you have a viable list, even though it's a challenge, you're going to go for it. And so you can work extra hard to get over that final hump to complete it. If you review it and it still feels like a lot, maybe these two are really big, you might bump this out to the next day, or you might leave it here with the hope if you think it's conceivable that you'll get to it. And it's really that simple. You're just moving things around so that the most importantly, the next day is viable and it's in the order of importance, particularly the first, second, third priorities fourth and fifth following, of course. Now, if future days are starting to get really piled up, you could you don't need to put nearly as much thought into any days beyond tomorrow. But if a day looks ridiculous, like it's piling up, or you have one big thing in there and you know it's gonna take the whole day, just start shuffling things out, spreading them out, so the lists are roughly even, and no one day is a monster list. What you're essentially doing here is creating a to-do list for each day, but a small manageable one for each day, instead of having one giant overwhelming to-do list that you're carrying with you day to day, all of that on your back all the time. So you can't relax, you can't focus, you've always got this bearing over you. We have small, manageable, doable to-do lists and each day we just look at tomorrow's small, manageable to-do list and then we optimize it, both in terms of a double check on whether it's viable and then a prioritization of the sequence. And then you're gonna go through this in order. If you've got an urgent first thing at the desk item listed as immediate, you'll sit down at your desk You'll either do your startup routine, which we'll talk about in another video soon, or if it's really pressing, you'll do this right away and then you'll do your startup routine. Ideally, you do the startup routine first. Depends how pressing this immediate is. Some days you won't have an immediate. Then you'll do your startup routine, which we'll do a video on shortly. And then you'll go into the quicks. You'll knock out a few of the quicks just because they're easy, they're simple, get them off the plate. And you might at this point check your email, see if there's anything you need to respond to, see if there's anything you need to put out there to ask somebody else to do. And then to the extent scheduled items pop up, they'll all be clustered here. If you have multiple scheduled items, they'll stack up together and you'll have your scheduled items today so you don't miss anything. They're up front and they're clear so you don't miss them with a bright color. So that's there just to make sure you don't miss anything. And then you will dive into, as you have open periods throughout the day, you will get dive into your first priority, then your second priority and third priority. During breaks, you might do errands and reminders. So you're queuing up the sequence, you've got great clarity on how to execute. Now it's not blocked out hour by hour except for the scheduled events. If you're having trouble completing what you wanna do and what you're scheduling to do this way, then tomorrow's video is gonna talk about how to take it to the next level. But for many days and for many people, this is sufficient. And for large blocks of weeks and months in my life, I'll work off of this approach entirely. Then when I need to get more serious or I'm having trouble sticking to the schedule, I'll then take it to the time blocking approach that we'll talk about in the next video. But again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to do this the evening before the day you start executing on that priority list. And that's it, a fairly simple one, but I've been getting a lot of questions, so I wanted to present it with more detail than we did when we did it as part of a giant dashboard. This is specifically how you plan tomorrow, the evening before, and you line it up, and then you queue up the days down further with less precision, with less rigor, but with a loose estimate and make those to-do lists for each day, a small manageable one that's digestible and doable. And that makes your life so much easier. You're typically planning out about a week. That's fine. Anything you know is gonna have to happen on certain days further out than a week, make them active tasks in the action items database. This is the task database. 
plan them out further, put them there, and they'll roll forward on the day that is appropriate. And the night before, you'll assess it. And if it's important, it'll stay on that date. You could plan this out two weeks, but one week's sufficient. And to the extent you're working on action items or tasks here that are part of bigger projects, you'll be managing those at the very least once a week in your weekly review, you'll see what's active and what's not. Only the active tasks are popping up in this calendar. So you wanna make sure every project that's active has at least one, if not more, active tasks, and then they'll roll in on the pre-assigned day based on the due date, the DO date again. That's the day that you're either going to do it or you're going to reschedule it, but you're scheduling it to a specific date in the future. And then when that date rolls on, the evening before, you'll assess whether you wanna keep that scheduled for that day or push it down again. If you keep pushing things over and over and over and never doing them, eventually you need to ask yourself, do I really wanna do this? Is it important enough to be in my action items task database? If you keep pushing it and you never feel like it's important enough to do, at some point either delete it or just do it. But it forces you to make a decision. Nothing gets lost, nothing slips through the cracks. You make a deliberate decision on everything that you have entered into the system. But if you keep pushing it forward, then it's time to ask yourself, maybe this shouldn't be on my list at all. Deleting an item and choosing not to do it is a totally legitimate choice as well. In the next video, we're going to look at how to integrate the Action Zone with Google Calendar or Microsoft Outlook Calendar or any other calendar app so that the two are integrated, you know what's happening in both systems, and importantly, you can do time blocking where you are really mapping out with more precision and more specificity how to make things happen in your day. This is the next level of intensity. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below or join us at my new online community for a broader conversation. That's at yearzero.io. And hit like if you found this valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a shot. I work hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.